All right, mate. We've got two Pylon Tech batteries sitting here on my workbench. Um, you'll need about a 20... What have we got there? A couple of finger gap between them. Uh, and then the way they link together, you've got these little jumper leads here will get supplied with each battery. What you're going to do, you're going to jump a... You can see each battery's got two positives and two negative connections. So have a look at that. That guy there will just push in. You heard the click there, and then you do the same on your bottom battery. Heard the click. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to connect the positive on one battery and the negative of the other back to the battery box here. So, uh, the breaker box. So, these two leads, pretty wide, obviously. There's a couple of metres of length on those. And... Um, so negative on the bottom. Well, you can go either way, but as long as they're opposite, basically. And then you've, you'll also get this little short data lead. That's going to go from RS485 slash LO, L0. And each, each battery's got an L0 and L1. So you're going to go out on the bottom battery, and you're going to go L1 on the top battery so that makes this guy basically becomes a master if you buy a third battery you plug in there on oh, no, actually you did buy three batteries what am i talking about so you'll do the same you go out of that one up to the next one above and then that other data lead that we had here if you have a look it should say the word bat on there so it's going to go in on the can bus connection on the top battery There we are. So you've now connected the battery. So again, with three batteries, you would, you know, pop this guy off, daisy chain from here to the one above, and um, and the same with the positive, and then obviously you'd take that positive off the very top battery. Now to switch on, it's pretty simple. On, on, and nothing's happened. So you go to the very top battery and you press the SW button press and hold for half a second and you can see things start to flash to life come over here and uh, if you turn on the 24 to 12 volt this little blue one for the 24 to 12 volt converter it also brings power on for the touchscreen and servo GX uh, sorry and you've got to turn on the main battery breaker uh, we should see some lights start to flash here in a sec as everything starts to wake up there we are and uh, the screen just gave a flash but we missed that and then you can uh, turn on your MPPT turn on your safety switches come over to the inverter switch on the inverter to the on position I heard the inverter wake up just waiting for the screen to come up as the um, there we are starting so the Servo GX is booting up now. We've got a, a green light for Wi-Fi access. Now this will be a setting you'll need to do at home after it's up and running. So it's saying inverter off at the moment. It's still waking up. It'll have that data link up shortly and give us the word inverting. There we are. Tap on, um, if you tap on the screen, it's a touch screen, so you tap on the menu and you get this list of menus. Now what you need to look at, if you've got Pylon Tech batteries, go into Pylon Tech, oh, hang on, can't do this and watch the screen, tap Pylon Tech, sorry, scroll down to parameters and look at charge current limit. That's saying 111 because I've got two batteries um, so you'll want another half of that again. So another, what, 55 volts, a uh, 55 amps. So you should end up around 160 amps to show that you've got all three batteries talking. So if you don't see that, if you see 111 means there's only two talking. If you see, you know, 56 volts or something, then it means you only got one battery communicating, if that makes sense. 
So, uh, and it'll tell you there, state of health, battery temperature. I'll scroll up, there we are. The voltage, amps going out, and state of charge is 88%. Um, oh, so yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Scroll down until you get settings. And then scroll down until you find Wi-Fi. There it is there. Wi-Fi networks. And uh, what you want to look for is the Wi-Fi network that you want to hook up. So your hotspot on your phone, etc. Obviously, you would go in and uh, plug in your password there, etc. So I don't have a hotspot running here at the moment because it's turned off. That Venus number there, that's itself, actually, because it creates its own hotspot so you can access it um, locally. Um, and that's about it. So just hit Pages and you'll get back to your touch screen, uh, back to your color screen. Um, I'm going to, just for a quick demo, uh, you've also got this guy here coming off here. That's going to plug into your Phoenix inverter for alternator charging. And I'm just going to use that as a uh, pretend shore power inlet. You heard the contactor kick in then. So when the Phoenix starts, that contactor will pull in. And if we watch the inverter, we should see it switch over to charger mode to show that shore power is coming in takes a few seconds here we are mains on and bulk charge and if we have a look up there now we're starting to draw shore power now what you're going to want you may recall this from your previous system we're going to go in to menu we're going to scroll back up till we find the multi plus and input current limit I've set it 2.5 currently. That will be good for the Phoenix inverter, but if you happen to be plugged into the caravan park, you're going to want to come in and change this. And so obviously just, you know, plus, minus, etc. And then hit a tick there to acknowledge. You can see that's changed. And so if we go back to pages, we see we've increased our shore power current that we're bringing in. So for the Phoenix inverter, I'd say no more than about two and a half for shore power connection. That'll be whatever you want, whether it's 10 amps or 15 amps from a caravan park, or if you've got a Honda generator, something like that might be six amps. Um, so yeah, alrighty. Um, I, I think that's about it. I don't think I need to show you too much more on this. Um, so mate, happy days, enjoy it. Oh, the only trick will be yeah, if, um, if you get a, an extension for those, plenty of holes up there if it won't fit just you know maybe use a um don't don't use these guys on this side because they're blocked off by this barrier because that's 240 this side here so i've got some bungs on order and they still have not arrived which is really annoying um but you've got a spare hole there which is 20 mil or these 12 mil holes whatever fits for the hdmi extension if you need to drill one out a bit bigger then so be it um yeah all right well, good luck with it, mate, and um, let me know how you get on. Alrighty, catch you later.